Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Philippians 1, verses 2 to 11. Hear now these words. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? Ever-present God, open our hearts to feel your presence in this space. Open our ears to listen for your call as we move forward. Touch us with your peace as we celebrate the ways we are community in ministry. Anoint the words shared in this meditation, that we are led to glorify and praise you in all we do and all we said. Amen. Amen. So as many of you know, I am a night owl. Yes, I stay up very late at night. And so when we had cable, which we chose not to have the last couple of years, because that only made me stay up later, but when we had cable, I would watch the 11 o'clock news, right, for a half hour. But then I would flick to those 11.30 talk shows. You know, Fallon, Kimmel, Colbert, depending on their guests, depending on where I landed. But I loved, at the end of the week, watching Fallon write his thank you notes. The dramatic music. share his thoughts of gratitude. This morning we listen to the Apostle Paul raise his pen as he shares his thankfulness for a community in Philippi. Now Paul was a traveling pastor and he was a church planter who authored many, many letters to various faith communities that he was mentoring, which, he, which we will find throughout the letters in the New Testament just beyond the Gospels. So Paul traveled all over the Mediterranean, known today as Turkey and Italy. He would settle in various towns and cities for a bit, meet the people, and start preaching about Jesus and inviting them to be followers of the gospel, followers of Jesus' ministry and to share that ministry with others. So once he would gather enough like-minded people and 
and they were feeling comfortable and established, he would begin this Christian community. And often these Christian communities were in homes. They were called home churches, and they, there they would gather, and they would eat together, and they'd celebrate the ministry of Jesus and the good news for their lives, and be challenged and empowered to go out and do the same. He was also sharing how they could respond in their lives with the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So after leading this new church community for a while, Paul would wrap up his ministry by establishing new church leaders, and then he would pack all his possessions and belongings and bags. Now, apparently he only had a few bags and not enough that will fill like an 18-wheeler truck. <laughs> And he would head to the next town that he felt God was calling him and leading him to go to. And he would repeat this ministry all over again. In his absence, he would correspond with church leaders, listening for news about how the church community was doing and what they were struggling with, to which he would respond back with a letter of instructions, a letter of guidance, a letter of approval, of celebration. These letters would be circulated only in those particular communities. But they were shared to a wider audience through one another in that faith community. And eventually, they made their way into the canon of our New Testament. And this one, into the scriptures, into the New Testament, entitled Philippi, or Philippians. I love the way Paul begins his letter of thank you. He says, I lift prayers of thanksgiving every time I remember you. He opens his letter with such grace and abundance of love. Paul's thoughts and his words are my thoughts and my words, my friends. They are my words this morning to each and every one of you who amazed me that all of you came out today. <laughs> As I conclude my time here and transition to another community of which God calls me to, I thank God every time I think and remember you. Since February, when I received my appointment to Oakhurst, I have been praying with joy for each one of you. I have been thinking of all of you. I have held your membership list in my private prayer time every morning. I, like Paul, am confident that the one who began a good work among you will complete it. Because God never lets us down. Amen? Amen? For you have shared God's grace with me and have left your handprint on my heart. You have added to my story of life and of faith and that of my families. You have changed us for good. We have laughed. We have cried. We have celebrated and we have grieved all together as the family of God, as the community of faith, as friends. I've had the privilege to be there with some of your new beginnings and honoring some of your endings. 
Thanksgivings for our 14 years of ministry, of our time together, that is almost to the day today. And I know it will continue in you for years to come. Our shared journey that has that you have taught to me, and I hope that I have taught to you. You have made me a better person and a better pastor, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Together we have accomplished so, so very much. And there is much still to do that I know you will continue to work and accomplish in the name and the glory of God. Atlantic Highlands, Navisink, Harbor, we have worshipped in these beautiful spaces together. We have accomplished and experienced and, and loved cantatas that have been shared, jazz music that has lifted us as we celebrate the saints who have gone into their eternal home. <clears throat> we, pets and boats have been blessed. Live animals have helped us engage in the Christmas story. New technology and sound and staff has enhanced our reach to connect with those at home. We've cared for our Atlantic Highlands Church building as we have painted the steeple not once but twice. <laughs> Recarpeted new windows, new boiler, new air conditioning, and all new bathrooms installed to welcome friends and neighbors comfortably here. We have raised $5,000 in four short month period to purchase an ark of animals through Heifer International to cre create a sustainable community in a financially in unstable region of the world. And we have approximately served 60 families a week here in these small harbor towns of our world. We have tried to tend to our spiritual and relational growth through small groups like Open Door, Lincoln Tunnel Walks, seasonal ministries of all sorts, and five mission trips, including Katrina response the year prior to Sandy's Superstorm Sandy, which only prepared us and made us ready when we needed to help our neighbors. We've had family ministries that include Sunday School and Youth Fellowship. We have baptized 37 children at this baptismal font together. We have confirmed 15 of our youth, some who are here today. We have welcomed 24 new members, and we have buried and celebrated the life of 134 friends and neighbors in 14 years. We have linked arms with Family Promise, CROP, the local groups such as Equity and Inclusion, UNICEF, and of course, Encore, United Methodist Committee on Relief. We have hosted Scouts, AA, and Al-Anon. We have welcomed health classes and counseling to find space in our buildings so that we can reach out to others, to our friends, to our neighbors who might be in need, in God's name. We've traveled through all this season together as a church family. We have supported one another through our many life's ups and downs. We've held each other up during Sandy by equipping our building and creating a disaster team that included communications, food, clothing, repairs, rebuilding supplies, hot coffee, and a much desired presence and listening ear when our neighbors needed it. We have cried together as we made hard decisions. 
No longer chartering the Boy Scout Troop 22, but thankfully the Navis Sink Firehouse coming alongside us and welcoming them in. We have cried together as we sell, sold two buildings, Navis Sink United Methodist Church and the Atlantic Highlands Presbyterian Church. And we have become one, uniting together. All of that is not far from our hearts. As we focus on these beautiful stained glass windows that remind us of that space, shared space and this table that we surround ourselves among, uh, around as we serve communion. Symbols, elements of our shared life brought together in one. And we have celebrated our kinship with church picnics, like the one in Bowman Park, or our shared experiences as community of hope. And a post-COVID, very wet and rainy barbecue right here in the parking lot, or I should say in the building. <laughs> like the Apostle Paul, it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and the depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure <clears throat> and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory of and to the praise always, my friends, of God. For me, as I said, you've helped me grow stronger as a person and as a pastor. And one of the many ways, it's been through all of the things I've named, but in, one of, in many of the ways, one stands out most, and that is small group study. And our many ways of mission and fellowship that have helped my faith deepen my understanding of Scripture, kept my focus always on Jesus, and has been one of the greatest gifts of ministry for me. Journeying, sharing life and faith struggles with folks through weekly conversations has changed me for good by what I have learned in it from one another, and so, it is a handprint on my heart, along with all of our ministry. Friends, I cannot overstate the importance and the impact that small group ministry makes, along with worship, to help you grow as an individual disciple of Christ and as the body of Christ, the church. It is my hope that if you are not in one, you will get in one. If you want to create one, create one. But I will tell you, life will change in a small group ministry. And ministry will flourish because it's about God and growing us as disciples. And isn't that what Jesus did? Is grow disciples before he left them. That is what Paul did was grow disciples so that they are the body of Christ in the world and continue to grow in themselves and grow for the world. So it is my promise and also my hope that you will enhance your life and the life of this faith community by deepening your journey of discipleship in small groups, in mission opportunities, and in all the many ways you have been in ministry. My thanksgiving overflows with joy for the work we have done together and accomplished together in God's name, for the love we have shared, for the support I have received as a person and as your pastor, for the growth I have experienced from you as a pastoral leader, and the grace that you have and continue to extend to me 
and my family. I trust that the work that God has started in each one of you and in this church and as the body of Christ will continue in the future under the leadership of Reverend Nicole Hamilton. And that God will bring all our ministries to completion one day. Endings, my friends, are bittersweet. As called as I feel to share my gifts in ministry with the First United Methodist Church of Oakhurst, to journey with them into the future, I will miss you so very much. I, Gary, Hannah, Lydia, we have grown to love you like a family. And it is so incredibly hard to say goodbye. I will forever cherish the times that we have shared with each of you. And I can say each of you. And here in the Atlantic Highlands, Navisink Highlands communities. I will hold you in my heart and my prayers as I leave this pastoral world and as we as a family make a new location of our home. I lift endless prayers, my friends, of thanksgiving for each and every one of you. I will pray God will continue to bless you and to us on our way as we all continue to grow and move forward into the future, into more faith, into more love, and into more service with God. Friends, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Continue to be you, the best you God has created you to be. Thank you for allowing me to be me. I love you, and your handprints are all over my heart. Amen.
I have been changed for the better. Litany in your bulletin. I'm going to have you guys come on up here. Be front and center with me. <laughs> Our church is a family tied together by a common thread of faith. We are brothers and sisters with varied gifts for the work ministry and the building up of the body of Christ. Ecclesiastes reminds us that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, including a time to keep and a time to let go. This is true for every family member. They come, they go, they arrive, they depart and encounter passages of endings and beginnings. As a family, we share joys and sorrows, laugh and cry, dance in heaven burdens, and dance in celebrations, remember and reflect, create visions and offer hope, feast and worship, welcome and say goodbye. Today we celebrate these gifts of a shared season of life, my friends, and faith. Today we celebrate our ministry that has helped us grow and change for good. 